the 80s into the 90s. That's Living Joy and I'm a Dreamer. We're now joined in the studio by two wonderful gentlemen. <laughs> I think they, I think so as well. But uh, uh, <laughs> Fabian yes. and um, Mr Pollard. Hi, good morning. Good morning, sir. Hello. I'm very well, thank you. Not too bad. Very good. And, and the studio's behaving itself? Um I'm kicking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right then. That's all right. So, sound is, sounded good. Very right, good. So what what I want to do is is follow on from last week about design science, and uh, Fabian has brought in some nineties tracks, and we will be back with nineties music. That is our design aim this week. Um, uh, but I want to start out by playing uh, from the, from the CD. A, a bit from the uh, Radio 4 Today programme for the purpose of review and comment. Um, this was um, broadcast sort of over Christmas, New Year, and I think it is relevant to design science because it, it, it shows, I think, how scientists might operate in, pr- in practice. It's um, Sir Paul Nurse and Ian McEwan, but I'm not sure which is which. It's not really an interview, it's more of a conversation. Uh, but one of them's a scientist and one of them's a novelist in this in this track. Novelist. <laughs> so uh, would you would you play the track, JD, and then we we'll, might talk about it afterwards. What about creativity? Sometimes people look for parallels between science and writing or the arts in the act of creation. Do you think there might be more sort of common ground and interest there? in trying to think of how we are creative and whether in different domains that you've mentioned the creative act may be more similar than we think. I think it is. I think daydreaming is a crucial element for both novelists and scientists. The luxury of uh, solitude, which I think is one of the privileges of civilization, and to use that solitude to dream your way into something new. There, I think, we are in, in each other's camps. One of the things which I think is a mistake is that science is always viewed as sort of chiselled in stone Um, and really quite often it's not like that. As a researcher I know um, particularly at the beginning of projects I have no idea where to go. It's like walking through fog Mm. and I think it's very important to keep options open to to actually emphasise the ambiguities in the situations that that you have. Do you sense a sort of um, some overlap there with the sort of thinking sometimes in... Walking through fog is a very good analogy and can describe uh, the process of writing a novel, which I think of in broadly in terms of an open-ended journey. Maybe you've got a sketch map, you've got a rough idea where you might be going, but in part it is an investigation and you're always hoping for surprises, to surprise yourself or for the material to take on a form that you could never have predicted at the start. And maybe one way in which we could describe both uh, literature and science as being um, part of one process is to talk about curiosity. Perhaps we don't really need to be just thinking, here's science and here's the rest of life, or here's science and here's literature or all of art. The impulse to know something is key to having the gift of consciousness. We can think of science as organised curiosity. I really do promote curiosity because quite often, as a scientist, we're having to respond to pressures to produce this, to achieve this, and to discover this. And I always say, just let us indulge our curiosity, and in the end you will get what you want. That kind of exploring is, I think, the key to a peculiar kind of happiness. Not the happiness of laughs and smiles, but the pursuit of something difficult and the absorption in it. So, Fabian, I don't know, don't know what you made of that. When I spoke to JD earlier about the idea of a, a design science DJ, we've looked at what a DJ does, and I, I think uh, skill comes into it. And that may be beyond what what science can suggest. So we don't we don't plan everything in great great detail uh, as the result of some formula or something like that. Um, there's more improvisation during the during the two hours or however long it is as you're discovering. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sure JD's going to make his own comments on this. 
but I, I wonder what you made of that clip as, as it might illustrate design science and how a design process OK, well, I mean, the, the, uh, the common factor was that they both claimed that uh, in their professions of being Ian McEwan being a, an author and uh, Sir Paul Nurse being a scientist, that professionally they both walked through fog. So that, that's a good common ground starting point, isn't it? Um, if you talk about a DJ improvising, um, that, I think, is just the exercise of control. Um, and control comes from seeing what you've done, how well did that do, and what are you going to do next? And probably what you're going to do next is the result of, of sort of spontaneously reacting to what's just gone before. I'm, I'm sorry to say it like this, but from the scientific point of view, that is a, a, a control loop. So oh. um, perhaps science is often <coughs> consisting of a vocabulary that just um, sticks its own labels on what happens anyway. So um, I, I don't think this is such a big deal. Um, I think one of the problems we have, especially in this country, is is you've got the humanities, the arts, and, and, and science, and uh, the re one party will... It's like oil and water. They will tend to fend off the other. Uh, and so the, there is an aversion uh, from um, science to um, l loveys and techies and geeks, you know. They don't often g get into the same bed. I guess when, it, when they do, it's rather exciting. But <laughs> well, we'll see how it mm. goes along on this, on this adventure and... Um, other other adventures. Well, what, what can I say? What what did arise was, um, uh, I think Ian McEwan suggested that um, in response to Paul Nurse saying that science was organised curiosity, um, I think Ian McEwan said, um, but on the other hand, that there is a, a desire to explore and make contributions which may not be planned, and that, in simple terms, is, is usually called blue sky. Uh, science and thinking, for which universities used to be famous, and it's when they get led by, by funding requirements that they, they lose that, and they become more of a science factory, which is not so exciting. No, and uh, there might be other subjects as well. Yeah, so if, if the DJ is, is commanded to increase the ratings in a particular um, sector, uh, that's the same thing. They, they will be slightly inhibited in what they can do. And their, their scope for improvisation um, is, is not so wide. It becomes disciplined. Um, and, and I think you can take it from there. So, JD, how, do, how, are you, how are you finding this? Are you any more convinced about this idea of a design science DJ? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's taken me all these weeks and still haven't got it. <laughs> well, it isn't that you don't get it. You don't, you're not convinced by it. I'm you, not convinced that the words go together. Science and design, or science and DJ? Yes, yeah, science and DJ. So how do you think a DJ operates, then? Uh, me sitting here. Yes. <laughs> pushing the buttons, yes. pulling the faders and telling you to shut up. <laughs> oh, right. OK. Well, that's a, that's a very useful contribution. Thank you very much. Um, you're not wrong. No. You're not wrong. Uh, well, I think we'll just sort of carry on with it and see see where we can go. Because um, one of the... the un not well, slightly unpredicted aspects of this uh, two weeks is that Fabian's getting more and more into being a DJ, <laughs> not, not simply being a commentator on design science. Yeah, he's um, got it. He's got the flair. He's, get, he's getting there. Yeah, he's getting there. <laughs> so, That's shall we... Is, is that because I'm scientific? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You're just using your humane si self and oh, your knowledge oh, of, of science makes a lot of, lot of better, much better, I think. Mm. Well, look, I've got another clip about design science, which I'll try and play in about half an hour's time, depending on how, how, how things are going between you. But I, I think this is going to work quite well. I think um, Fabian has the, has, the, has the ideas for the tracks, some yes. of which you brought in. JD's got the buttons, and uh, we'll see how this works out. The, the design aim, I should remind you, is to move into the 90s and to, to challenge JD's... Normal behaviour with his 80s show on top of my Normal behaviour? <laughs> See what I have to put up with down here. <laughs> oh, yes, I have abnormal and normal behaviour. <laughs> OK, shall we lead into the first track? Um, you haven't told me which one you like. OK, well... There, this there, is the design in this. There, there are eight tracks there, yes, yes. and I think we'll start with the first track, and I'll just tell, tell you what it is. It's... Um, it's Red Hot Chili Peppers. I thought it was a good way to start because they were formed in, in about 1983 and um, this track comes from their album One Hot Minute. It's called Aeroplane, 1995. 
it's it's rather funky and um, it has a tremendous contrast between the the slap bass uh, and and then a, a children singing the chorus aeroplane 